So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. No. What's up, everybody? This is the Jedi. Before I get into the information, I first want to say um, to all of my people who uh, are in the who are in Florida and the Carolinas, those who have been affected by the recent hurricanes. Um, some of you I was able to reach out to. Uh, simply Sandra, big shout out to you and Don. I love you guys. And, um, you know, I've kept you all in my prayers. And, um, you know, I'm pleased that um, you were able to come through uh, this storm, you know. Um, yeah. I um I give thanks to Allah for that. <clears throat> and um I will talk more about that. Um I first want to um say next I should say that the video that I la the last video that I did, if you've not seen that, then you want to go and see that video where I lay out my case. Um, telling you, proving to you that Kamala Harris has already been lost this election, everybody. She's just putting up pretenses now. She's, she's already lost. And I lay out the evidence of the behind-the-scenes polling and data that they get, uh, and then also personal knowledge that I have, and so she's already lost. Um... You can go and watch that. I also will try to have it pop up at the end of the video. <clears throat> um, this is the death nail, everybody, because I found out about this after I did that video. And that's, I was going to say I'm glad I did, but I was going to say, but it's really neither here nor there. Just, th this is the death nail. Not, not that I needed it. I didn't need this. This is for you. Indeed, everything that I've been doing on this election is for you. I've already told you. I've been over participating in the American electoral process, period. This is not my country. My country is the Republic of the Gambia in West Africa. And even if that had not been the case, I still would be over this electoral process because I was nearly over it already, but certainly 2016 and 2020, I didn't need 2020. 2016 was enough for me. When I saw, we all saw, but some of us saw and didn't see, you see? Some of us have, have eyes, yet we do not see. And so, what we saw, those of us who saw and saw, <laughs> was the curtain was moved back and tied back with ropes. We saw evidence of what I've been preaching forever. I've said it's a one-party system, everybody. They're just playing good cop, bad cop. That's it. And... What we also know is that they all want corporate candidates. So you never get anybody that represents the people and we start getting the shit that we deserve. You see, if I'm paying taxes in this bitch, I get something. I go to the store, I pay my money, I get something. I go to the gas station, I pay my money, I get something. This is the only fucking system where they're trying to convince you to let them rape the fuck out of you of taxes. 
and then you're not supposed you're supposed to be so proud as an American that you don't want the government to do anything for you. Okay, if you if, if you if you in that much of a charitable mood, my Cash App is the Jedi 1814. You understand? If you're just that charitable, you see that you want to just give money away and get not a fucking thing back. There's a lot of good things you could do with it besides giving it to the government and actually get a return on your investment. But that's what they've tried to move the country to. And you hear white people say that shit all the time. I don't want the government to do anything for me. Really, bitch? So when did you fill out your last uh, tax form? Oh, okay, okay. But you don't want the government to do anything for okay, just to, okay, just 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 understand the parameters. Um and so but I saw they pulled the curtain back and tied it with ropes. I saw the Democratic Party load the stage so that they could stop Bernie Sanders. They even let uh, the Bloomberg little short Zionist fuck buy his way. He's not a politician. Buy his way onto the debate stage. It's never been done in the history of the electorate with uh, uh, either party. Anything but Bernie. And he's an Orthodox Jew. But you claim you love Israel so much. Oh, you don't really love the Jews. You love white, stinking, fucking, demonic Zionists is what you love. You don't love Jews. Because here's a guy who's an Orthodox Jew. Oh, but you don't like that because they don't go along with that bullshit. And they don't recognize the state of Israel or its flag or the, its right to exist. So, okay, no Bernie. Got to get him off the... All right, quick. Get Bernie out. All right, roll him out. Roll him out. Roll him out. You see... And it was a movie. It was anything but Bernie. And on top of that, Bernie wouldn't fight. Because he's an Orthodox Jew. God love him. He's the greatest candidate for president in these United States that never won. I stand by that to my grave. I stand by that to my grave. And then they did it again to him in 2020. Even the Orange Puff at one of his rallies, said, they did it to you again, Bernie. They did it to you again. They did it to you again. You see? Oh, the truth was out there. And they stacked the Republicans. I mean, it was a whole thing, man. But I'm over it. So this is for people who, um, any of my political coverage is just to, to sustain my, my argument that I'm right, uh, as I was in 2016. I predicted Trump long before the uh, the election and then did my I told you so video. But, um, and then I predicted also that, that Kamala is not going to win. All right. So this is for those people who are still want to somehow be involved in the electoral process when there's no need for you to do that because for two reasons. A, both parties are corporate parties. They're going to have the candidate they want, so you're never going to get the shit that you're so passionate about. They tell you what you need to be passionate about, and then you lock onto that, and you go vote for exactly who they tell you to vote for. You just follow the cheese, you see? Just like this year, it's abortion. It's all about the women and their damn abortion. So quick, run to the polls, you see? Um, they're telling you what it is. And, um... So you lose in that way, but you also lose because they could have gotten rid of this electoral college, you see, and they didn't do it. They could have gotten rid of the electoral college. They could have gotten rid of that, and they could have gotten rid of the filibuster. It used to be a, a simple majority. One party wants legislation, the other party doesn't. They vote. Whoever gets 51 Boom, the measure is adopted. That's it. Now it's like 60 something, like 68 or damn near 70 votes. And that's supposed to be like a super majority and shit. This is the filibuster, everybody. They could, they didn't get rid of that. This whore sat right there and said to somebody she was being interviewed by, we just didn't have the votes. We just didn't have the votes. Really, bitch? Because y'all had the House and the Senate for a minute. You could have did it on day one. Could have did it. He could have sent a notice to, to Congress saying, send me a bill to sign to get rid of this thing. They could have did it. 
They also could have gotten rid of the Electoral College. The Electoral College has been, in, it has been installed since slavery. That was to ensure, basically, that your black ass would never be able, like Barack wasn't supposed to ever make it. But he, he won so big that if you win a certain amount, then the Electoral College has to go with that. But even still, there's a, there, it still is up, up to the, up to the uh, electors because they should be inclined to go with the, uh, the, 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 the will of the voters of their state. But they don't have to. They don't have to. You see? So what does your vote vote really matter? If you send out somebody for pizza for 10 people, they get to the pizza shop and there's somebody that's saying, no, no, you're not getting uh, 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 pineapple and vegetables. Uh, you're getting uh, bacon and fucking, you know, I don't know, anchovies or some shit. Like somebody you don't even know is deciding what pizza you're going to have. So that's the second reason. Um... So she's already lost. And then now I'm here now to speak to you because I'm calling this the death nail. I could have picked any of her last several interviews, but I picked this one. This is the death nail, everybody. They built this up as this big thing. Oh, Charlemagne the God is interviewing her. And we need to be very, very suspect of the Breakfast Club. I've said this in the past. Suspect of all of them sitting up there, plus Charlemagne the God. How is some black dude that looks like him, talks with a lisp, he's two feet tall. How is he being elevated, but more than anything, respected and given legitimacy by white media and white people? Some shit just don't die. And one of the things we, we've always held in our culture and we should never let it go is if white people like you, we need to be very fucking suspicious of you. Very, very, because today they love Dr. King, but they, they never, you never hear anything about Malcolm X. Well, that's to do what we like is Malcolm. We're not in love with Dr. King. Do you know what I'm saying? Not in love because he should have told us to take out their fucking ass and we didn't. Malcolm was the one that said by any means necessary. So we should be very suspicious of this Charlemagne, the God person. You understand? And anyone who calls himself the God <clears throat> tells me he's in a different spiritual realm, uh, a fucked up one that is not connected to the divine, but is more likely connected to uh, the shaitan or the devil, Satan, you know. Um, I also observe this Angela Rye person. We need to be very careful about these divine nine ass people. Where do they get this divine nine? What does that mean? That's something satanic, I suggest. I don't know. What's its origins? Why divine nine? What the fuck is that? But there she was up on the breakfast club and they had Jill Stein and her Muslim running mate, a brother by the, by the name of Bilal, Bilal Ware. And she was very much in her feelings and uh, very much caking for the for for Kamala and trying to disrespect Jill Stein and 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 show where she's never won anything. And, you know, all I mean, she really exposed herself. She didn't need to. To me, I knew who the bitch was already. You understand any of these elevated Negroes in society, we need to be over their ass, everybody. If they don't speak like me, you gotta be, and they, and white people like them, you gotta be over, we need to divorce ourselves of Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, fucking Bill Cosby, Diddy, fucking Charlemagne, any, just all the people I can't name that we all know. All of them got to go. The entire Congressional Black Caucus, any of your fucking pastors and preachers, everybody must go. Throw them all out and we don't have shit else to do with them not a damn and in my perfect world if we were really organized anytime any of them was anywhere speaking on behalf of black people our lawyers our corporate lawyers would send them letters of cease and desist or you'll see a class action lawsuit from the entire fucking black community of this country Shut your black ass up. You don't speak for them. 
You want to be up some, uh, somewhere constantly saying, I only speak for me. I only speak for me. My dumb black ass. No lawsuit there. But the moment you try to cape up like you're trying to speak for black people or the community and shit, there should be a lawsuit. We should shut you down. We should shut you down legally or by any means necessary. You understand? So this was built up. And all of them are carrying it now as if it was this major success. She talked to the black community. I mean, no. No, 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 no. As you can see, our people are behind glass back here. You see, they're behind glass. They'll say, well, they're in a studio. It's, you know, this. But when they when it was on the other breakfast club, they would have everybody and their mother in that room. It was never a problem, you see? So we're not buying that. And even in the current one, they have a section behind the table where there's a, a sectional couch where probably 10 or 15 people can sit back there and stuff. So we're not, so why are people behind that? I, this is probably bulletproof glass for all we know. But it had no substance. They never said the word Israel. Never said the word, everybody. Never said the word Israel. Never said the word Africa at all. Never said it. Never said Gaza. Never said the Palestinians. Never said it. Never asked the bitch, why are you sending money? There was one sister at the beginning who I know was filtered before they wanted to make you think these questions were authentic, but trust me, they were screened and scrutinized and changed and, and beaten over the head before they, before the question was heard by the, the public. I know it. I know how these things go. And this one sister at the early beginning of it was trying to ask, she, 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 her question was very generic and, and, and frosted, it, it, just regular flat cornflakes, you know, um, you know, my issue is sending money to other countries, you know, instead of our country. Like, it was very, like, just get to the point, bitch. Say, why are you sending money to fucking Israel to slaughter people when we can, you know, like, but again, people tiptoeing around the issue. I'm a straight shooter. I will hit you dead in the fucking heart. Don't play with me. Life is a one shot. I don't have time to play games. I say it exactly how it needs to be said and exactly how I mean it, period. You don't like it? Kiss my entire ass. Everybody's looking for soft language and, ooh, that made me feel responsible. Ooh, I felt guilty there. Ooh, I hate that. Fuck you. Die off. So this meant nothing. And they tried to act like that she had been given hard questions and none of it was hard. And she, all she did, he would ask a question, she would give her tired ass stump speech that we've heard a billion times already. Nothing new came out of this at all, at all. And I'm only covering it because I can isolate one particular piece that I think shows major contrast and to show how fake the bitch is. You understand? It was a, a totally complete letdown. Some Christian pastor came in. That What the fuck is that for? It, first of all, it's a dying thing. It's a... Name any Christians you know. You don't even know Big Mom and them no more. They all dead and gone. The ones who was real so-called Christians. Most black people walking around the earth right now calling themselves a Christian are just some fake bitch. Drinking, drugging, fornicating, doing everything. Nothing Christian going on there. Nothing at all. So... We need to be over them bringing this Christian attachment to us. But they always want to scream, we're not a monolith. Why you only bring fucking Christian pastors to this bitch then? How come I don't see any Muslim imams coming in, huh? How come I don't see any Buddhist priests coming in, huh? If we're such, if we're not a monolith and we're so diversified as black people, then all of us should be represented. Stop sending these fucking Christian pastors then. Because all of us aren't a Christian in this bitch. I'm over it. But there he was, some Christian pastor with some bullshit to put you into that anesthesia. They always add the Christian element. I've, I've 
told, I've taught my audience this over the years, especially when we used to cover police brutality. I try to show you how that's a psychological thing that they're doing. They always bring some Christian pastor to step to the mic because that's your anesthesia. It's like a it's like a Manchurian candidate. They always have either a sound or, or, or a trigger word or a light or something that brings you back to doing something against your it's like a it's like a hypnosis and you don't even know you're doing it. That's why every time one of us gets murdered, they roll out the fucking Christian pastors and call them community leaders and shit. To, 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 to kill what should be the normal response in you, and that is revenge, not justice. Fuck justice. Revenge gets you fucking result, not justice. So that was a tactic. And then the questions were just dumb as fuck. Even the brothers that came in to ask questions were, re first of all, anybody has to read their own question, you should already al already know that suspect. If it's my question, the truth don't change. Think about this. Think, think now. The truth doesn't change everybody. If I have a question for you, I know what my question is. Why the fuck do I need to read my own question unless it's really not my question? Huh? And then, and plus, someone else has doctored it, so these words are not natural to me, therefore I must read it. I've been over that shit with American politics for decades. I don't know the first time I ever even saw that. Like, you know, like, God knows how old I was, but... You, you know, it's probably some presidential debate or something. And, and then the, you so and so has a question, and, and everybody's standing up reading a question. I'm like, if it's your question, why are you? I never could make sense of that. If it's my question, I don't need to read it. Damn. It's my question. It'd be different, like, you know, um, my cousin had wanted to ask a question, but he's not here right now, so I'm going to read it. Um, he had wanted to ask you, um, and then I read it. I don't need to read my question. That's right up there with somebody says, what's your name? And I go, oh, my name. Uh, and I pull a piece of paper out and read it. You'd never believe that's my name. You won't. So neither should you believe that these are these people's damn questions. It was so fake, everybody. It was so fake. They never asked her about her lineage, which, whatever. But if you came to talk to black people, then black issues should be on the table. You understand? You know, Charlemagne tried to keep that scowl on his face and act like he was being this tough interviewer. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was all fake and staged. That's all it was. Now, let me show you how two-faced the bitch is. Here's what she said back in 2016. Was it 2016? Because, you know, you have to separate. When she ran for, her, you know, she was running her own campaign, to, then the bitch never got to Iowa. She didn't get a single vote. Or as Trump would say, she got no votes. She got no votes. She didn't get any votes, no votes. I just he should be banned from saying the word vote. I'm over it. <sighs> Everything makes me furious right now. But so we don't know if, if this was then or this was after she had been selected as the vice presidential running mate. We all know. But the information is what's important. It, what what's important is it wasn't this campaign. All right? See this now. Do you support reparations for black people? Well, listen. That was a very straightforward question. Took a half a second to ask it. It was unambiguous. It's black or white, bitch. Yes or goddamn it, no. I'll shut up. Do you support reparations for black people? Well, listen. Again, we had over 200 years of slavery. 
We had Jim Crow. Okay, it says it right there. 2020 presidential candidate. So this is when she was running for her own damn self to be president. All right, go. Do you support reparations for black people? Well, listen. Are you a fake bitch? Again, we had over 200 years of slavery. We had Jim Crow for almost a, a, a century. We had legal. First of all, think about this, everybody. A black woman just asked her, do you support reparation for black people? Now, you're going to sit here and give a black woman the history of what we've been through when the question is precipitated out of knowing what the fuck we've been through, bitch. So you don't need to repeat that. She wants to give you some th thesaurus lesson of what we've been through. We already know that. Are you telling me or are you trying to remind yourself? Because you're not really black and you need to make sure you got your facts straight. I just not understanding. Do you support reparations for black people? Done. Well, listen, again, we had over 200 years of slavery. We already know. We had Jim Crow for we almost a, a, a century. We know. We had. We know. We know. Legalized discrimination, segregation, and now we have. We know. Segregation we and know. discrimination that is not legal but still exists and is a barrier to progress. We have disparities around housing. We have disparities around education. We have disparities around income. The bitch and is off on a cruise ship now. And we've got to do Christmas lights at Christmas. And what are the kids going to wear at Halloween? And oh my God, did I leave the stove on? All this shit. Bitch, do, are you for reparation for black people or not? Yes or no? Done. All this Marbury Bush shit, man. I cannot with her. Like, I, I just detest her in any setting. I don't give a fuck what she was doing or running for. How was she ever a prosecutor and a, an attorney general and, 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 and the district attorney? I mean, lawyering is language, everybody. When you stand before a judge or a jury or a grand jury, you have to be able to lay out your case in clear terms to a jury to be able to get them to vote for you. And your clients, whatever way you're trying to go, convict or, 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 or not convict, when you talk to a judge about something going to trial or not, you got to be able to argue your side. I mean, come on. There's all sorts of legal pleadings you got to write. I mean, there's storytelling. Like, why are you? This is on purpose, dude. It's on purpose. Some of the most concise speaking people are attorneys and lawyers. We'll start again and I'll shut up. I, I'll try, everybody. I, I'll try, damn it. Well, listen, again, we had over 200 years of slavery. We had Jim Crow for almost a, a, a century. We had legalized discrimination, segregation, and now we have it, it, segregation and discrimination that is not legal but still exists and is a barrier to progress. We have disparities around housing. We have disparities around education. We have disparities around income. We know. And we have to recognize that look everybody girl, look did not start out on an equal footing in this country. Did y'all see the bitch that's not, that's, that's not what I asked you, bitch, look on her face? Did y'all see that? Look, this is, bitch, that's not what I asked you. That's the, but that's not even what I asked you. You making my nose ring hurt. Recognize Look, that everybody bitch, not did not start out on an equal footing in this country. And in particular, black people have not. And so we have got to recognize that and do something about that and give folks a lift up. That's why, for example, I'm proposing the LIFT Act. Give people who are making $100,000 or less as a family a tax credit which will benefit and uplift 60% of black families who are in poverty. So by default- 60% of black families in poverty, not this will help all fucking black people because we've all been touched by fucking this bullshit, except for these mixed people and the people that come here as immigrants now. You, you see what I'm saying? Like all that Marbury Bush shit, the LIFT Act, they always come some little dainty shit, but everybody else is a specific act for their bitch ass. When it was the fucking Asians, they got pushed down for five minutes. And it was specific in Asian act bullshit. Stop fucking with them and give them money. You feel me? The fucking transgenders. It was specifically for the fucking transgender. It didn't lift all boats. And it wasn't lift all boats and 60% of transgender. It was all their bitch ass. I'm over it. Benefit and uplift... 60% of black families That's who are not in good poverty. Enough. 
So by default, it affects black families, but there's not a particular policy for African Americans that you would explore. But no, if you look at hear that the just so did you hear the, the the sister after she gave her dissertation or thesis hear that but no if wait, wait. you look particular policy wait. families but there's not a put affects black families by default it affects black families so by, by default, default it affects it black families but nothing specific for just black families affects black families but there's not a particular policy for African-Americans. Uh, but there's not a particular policy for African-Americans. And look, she thought her lift act was going to be enough. She literally is stumped right here because she's not a black woman. So this is not personal to her. She is a white bitch sleeping with a white fucking Zionist every goddamn night. Doug Imhoff. She's disconnected. No black person has to think about this shit. That's why I've said to my people a million times when I'm saying this time in my grave. You've not had any first in this country, everybody. When 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 Black History Month comes around, you fucking run from anybody that starts telling you that that, that, that starts identifying somebody that was the first African American to do something. Cause ain't nobody did shit. You've not seen a first on anything. Give a damn. Cause when there is a first, if this bitch was a first, if she had been black, that question would have been a yes, girl, I got us. What's your next question? That's what a first would have looked and sounded like. Know what's in front of you. See, for African Americans. Look, she's stumped. Well, but no, if you no, look no, at no, but no, no. This is supposed to, this this was supposed to have worked. I used my I used all my big words, and it's the Lift Act, and 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 most of all, white people won't be mad at me. So, uh, I, that was supposed to work. It didn't work. Listen, she goes, no, 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 no. See, no. It sounds like a three-year-old, like when you go, no, you can't have any chocolate. No, mommy, no, uh, no. Uh. But n no, if you look at the it, the reality of who will benefit from certain... But if you look at the reality of all the shit you just gave us a thesaurus on, then you would know your answer was some bullshit. No, no, but no. You look at the, it, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies when you take into account that they're not starting at at, at this and just you have to say certain policies you see that's like certain people and all this kind of d d fucking round the mulberry bush talking shit certain policies fuck her let's see for african americans that you would explore but n no if you look at the it, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies when you take into account that they're not starting at at, at the same place and they're not stand, they're not starting on equal footing, it will directly benefit black children, black families, black homeowners, because the disparities are so significant. But so if they're if so significant, because the disparity is so significant, as if she's teaching this sister something she's never heard before. And if they're so significant, then you should be specifically able to just do something specifically for those, since by your own testimony, the disparities are so different. Fuck her and any bitch that looks like her, bitch. Specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities. And we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen, the, the reality- See right there, she snapped. Right there is where she snapped. The first thing didn't work. Cause when she was like, no, no, that wait, that, that, that was supposed to work. That whole lift act thing, it didn't. Now you can see she looks to the right and she gets a whole nother idea. Watch. Listen. Right here, right here, right here. The, the reality also is Well, that and the reality is she even shifts in her chair. That's when you really think you got something good now. Well, maybe this will work. Let's see, they didn't go for that bullshit. Maybe this will work. They look, eyes to the right and down. Part of why we're doing it. With the grin and the nod, like I'm telling you something I know for sure. You need to listen to me. I know the way. I'm the one running. That's what all that body language was, everybody. Listen to me, little girl. You see? But the sister's still giving her death, <laughs> death glare and dagger eyes, but the camera's not on her now, but we assume she is because the previous look we saw. So now this is the, the, the switch up. Oh, wait, this will work. I know, I know. Wait, I have the answer. Pick me, pick me. Right here. Listen, the, the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit black people. Look, and see how the, the, the chain, and by the way, any policy, and she's trying to get that little smooth, girl, you know what I'm talking about, girl. You, still, you see, it all changed. It, hear me, everybody. Watch and listen. Watch and listen.
watch and listen so that you understand fully what you are seeing and hearing in front of you. That is the goal. That's why I'm prosecuting and interrogating this clip the way that I am. Watch and listen. So after she does the, the, the professorial thesaurus and the sister is like, that's really some bullshit. So you, you tell me you got shit for black people. Then she tries to explain it and then get very sort of intellectual high arcing and with the lean forward and the, the cheeks are going up with this slight grin that I know something you don't know grin. The sister is still giving her dagger eyes and death glare. So then she looks to the right and down and wait, this will work. You know, and then she gets that little girl, girl, you feel me? Like, I've never even heard her say girl, which is a sacred word for me from black women. Oh, it's so delicious because it's its own language. It's a whole communication. They have a thousand different ways that they say it. And it's a whole sentence or a whole phrase. Nobody can claim it except for the black woman. I never heard this bitch say girl. And we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen. Right here. The, the reality also is this. Voice goes Any up. policy that will benefit black people. Any policy is going to benefit black people. Look how her lips get tight and she starts talking from the corners of her mouth. Like the, the squeezed mouth. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the reality also is this. The mouth is very open before this. Now it gets tighter. It gets tighter. Watch, watch, watch. I were doing Very it. relaxed. Very professorial, leaning forward. The, the I know some you don't know grin, looking directly at the sister and all that. The sister is, is not having it. Boom. Listen. Quick. The, Wait. The reality also work. is this. Let me go black. Any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Will benefit all of society. Trust me, we know how to do this. Let's be clear about that. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. Let's really be clear. Because she just convinced her own self of it. That's why she had to double down. And let's really be clear. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. Because. No. That's the key phrase we were trying to get to. We'll just hear that one again. That's the zinger we want. We'll benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No, because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole in the country. Fuck all that. You never sat before any other group and said, if you expect me to say I'm going to do something just for transgenders, I'm not. Remember, they lit up the entire fucking White House when Obama was president in the fucking rainbow and shit. You see? Don't tell me you can't do shit specific because, oh, by the way, you're doing shit just for fucking stinking ass Israel right now. That doesn't help anybody except for fucking Israel. So it's just lies du jour all the way around, everybody. Just hear the lie one more time and we'll move to my next clip. Well, we'll benefit all of society. Wait. Let's be clear yeah, about that. Right here. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. And she said it with full throat with the neck and everything. You could almost hear the hell no. That's what the bitch said in 2020. Here's what she said today. Well, first of all, on the point of reparations, I, it has to be studied. There's no question about that. And I've been very clear about that position. In terms of my... It has to be studied. I've been very clear about that position. Lying fucking whore. You were clear that you wasn't doing shit just for black people. You lying slut. Lying whore. Well, first of all, on the point of reparations, I, it has to be studied. There's no question about that. And I've been very clear about that position. Lying whore. I just showed you what she was asked in 2020. And she was very definitive about her position. If you expect me to sit and tell you I'm going to do something just for black people, I, I can't do that. Now, it has to be studied. Fuck a study. 
like ju like Dr. King said, justice delayed is justice fucking denied. If this is no different than, you know, one of us gets murdered by these fucking uh, demon ass fucking paid murderers. And they go, we, we just, we just, we want everybody to stay calm until we investigate. That's just to delay your fire and try and calm you down because you should be going there drawing blood at that moment. You feel me? And they take forever and come out and tell you that they, they found no problem with what the fucking officer did and all the bullshit. Justice delayed is justice fucking denied and we've waited long enough. And so we need to stop asking the question about reparations. It needs to be a statement of, we're not going to ask you what your position is on reparations. We're just going to tell you if you're not for reparations without a study, then don't look for our vote. Done. You see, that's how you do it, everybody. And stop trying to be a fucking individual because that's why the bitch has already lost. As when I laid out my case and told you the states that she's already lost because of the Muslim populations that are there. Because Muslims are telling them, if you're not going to do a ceasefire, then don't look for our vote. Not, what's your position on a ceasefire? Are you looking to stop? Are, could you? No. Bitch, ceasefire or don't or kick rocks. Don't come right here. Don't. So that's where black people got to get. If you really want rep reparations of this bitch, you got to say, look, we're not asking no more. We're telling you, any candidate trying to seek the black vote, you must have a, you must show me how you're going to have an executive order on fucking day one for reparations. Because in this thing with um, Charlemagne, she claimed that right after, like right after the inauguration, within minutes, like from the inauguration stage to the White House, boom, they immediately did the, um, the border bill, the got border legislation. Like they dropped that on day one, like mo hour one. So it can be done. It can be done. Executive order. You see what I'm saying? And don't give me how would we do it. Fuck you, bitch. Because you're, you're not asking how you finding all these billions and trillions to send to fucking Israel. And now they've expanded their war and their aggression and their murder. So now you just send a hundred fucking troops and some more shit. You see? Fuck these people. They playing in our face, everybody. No more asking. We demand, and we got to start whipping our own fucking people into shape by any means goddamn it necessary. They need to come on board and do what, what's best for everybody. If they don't know, then just shut the fuck up and do what we tell you to do because we know what's best. That's how you get a damn result. I cannot wait to dance when this bitch loses. Can't wait. Can't wait. And we'll be also very thrilled when these dumbass motherfuckers who think they need to vote for Trump because what they not, I would have respect for these motherfuckers if they, if they was, if they was not going to vote for her and they said, I'm not going to vote for nobody. We need a, we need our own party. But they're just as dumb as the fucking slaves that they trying to call people that are Democrats. They're, they're even dumber because you just like massa told me to come over to the other plantation. It's better over here. But you're still on the damn plantation, you dumbass. No, you reject all that shit. Here you going into the arms of a dude that you know is a fucking racist. It's no way you're going to justify that to me. And in a way, I'm having no kind of friendship or any communication with any melanated black male that, that voted for fucking Trump. They will be dead to me from here to eternity. Wallahi, I swear it by Allah. Ain't shit you could say. Because any black person that I can't meet you on blackness, you're dead to me anyway. We don't have a relationship. We don't have a commonality. You, you, you mean nothing to me. So this would be that. You, you, there's nothing you could... I don't have nothing for you at all. Nothing. You don't exist. Your mama never had you. I'm dead ass. And I've been very clear on that. No, bitch, we already showed what you were clear on. But just so I give you context, because I did it on the first question. This was the brother. I have brought him to you over the years. This is Zeke from New Era, Detroit. Was very pleased and proud of him that he made it into this room. Not sure how he did it. But that's a hardworking brother. 
you know? And wow, I love the work they're doing, man. Oh my God, when I was trying to start the Black Independence Liberation League, that's when they came on my radar. And I was talking about networking with them and all these sorts of things. And, um, you know, because I was trying to look for other recruitment from other groups and things like that. You know, that's how I spoke with uh, the chairman of the Uhuru, uh, the Uhuru people. Glad I didn't join them because it turns out he got a white bitch for a wife. So I'm glad Allah protected me from that. But um, just so that you get full context of what was asked. And by the way, the brother never said reparations. This bitch is the one that said the word reparations. It's the only it was the only time the word was said in the entire fucking interview. I'm over it. Hear this. Good. Zeke, what's up, brother? What up, though? What up, though? Madam Vice President, Charlemagne the God. What up, though? What Much respect for this brother right here. SubhanAllah. Much respect. Oh, what up, though? Okay, I'll show Madam you. Vice President, Charlemagne the God. What up, though, and welcome to Detroit. Yes, sir. It's good to be I, back. I like to say the real Detroit because I'm up in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Zeke, uh, New Era founder uh, and CEO. Um, I worked on the ground here in Detroit and in black communities all across the, the country for over the past 10 years, actually celebrating our 10th year uh, this past August. All right. Um, in my 10 years of organizing, uh, we played a major role in the resurgence of pride, and the change of mindset uh, in Detroit neighborhoods across the city. Mm -hmm. We're not only known for the work that we do here in Detroit, but across the country in black communities. I'm um, having worked in over 35 cities of the blackest cities in America. Um, saying all that to say, um, I'm extremely qualified to sit in front of the current vice president and which can be the next president of the United States of America. Uh, as I pose my question to you, I would first like to make it known that I don't have any. I love that. I love that. I don't want that to be missed. I want this brother to get his full uh, uh, recognition as I see it. I love that he said, I want it to be well known that I'm fully qualified. So like, you're not doing me no favors. It's cute to meet you and all of that. But understand what this king just said. He represented his throne and his work. He knows what he's worth. I'm f I'll just let him say it to you again. I love that. I, I don't want you to have missed that. Um, saying all that to say, um, I'm extremely qualified to sit in front of the current vice president. I'm extremely qualified to sit in front of the current vice president. And which can be the next president of the United States of America. Love that. Uh, as I pose my question to you, I would first like to make it known that I don't have any emotional connections to politicians. I believe that this is one of our biggest flaws in the current political process. Mm -hmm. I view politics as a business and America is one of the biggest corporations in the world. With that being said, I'm here on behalf of the business of the black community. Mm -hmm. With all that black Americans have been through and contribute to the success of America, I feel that there should be an in-depth investigation or evaluation of the lack of resources and current living conditions in black communities nationwide. Mm. Um, my question to you is what's your stance on reparations we all know that America became great. My bad. I didn't hear him say reparations when I heard it the first time. My bad, y'all. So he did say the word reparations. I stand corrected. Um, my question to you is, what's your stance on reparations? We all know that America became great, you know, off the backs of free black labor. Um, how progressive are you on making it a priority and righting America's wrongs? It's understood that you are running for president for all people of America. Mm -hmm. Asking for specifics for black communities doesn't mean no, don't do for others, but black Americans mm -hmm. are heavily asked to vote Democrat in every election for over half a, a century with very little in return. What are your plans to address these very important issues and change that narrative? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Zeke. I appreciate that. Thank well you. Done, and thank you for your work. Mm -hmm. So to your point, um, yes, I am running to be a president for all Americans. That being say that part first. Fuck her. Go on. Being said, I do have clear eyes about the disparities that exist and the context in which they exist, meaning history, to your point. 
but you gave the other sister a whole rundown of the history and then said, so if you think I'm going to see and tell you I'm going to do something just, just going to affect black people, I can't do that. Bitch has changed her tone, you see. Say anything now. So my agenda, well, first of all, on the point of reparations, I, it has to be studied. There's no question about that. And I've been very clear about that position. In terms of my immediate plan, I will tell you a few of the following. One. Now she's going to go to her, her, her stump speech. So she's basically done answering his question now. It's all to the stump speech now. Go. As it relates to the economy, which is a lot of what you have addressed. Look, I grew up in the middle class. My mother. No, but he asked you about the economy as it related to black people specifically and to study why we are always getting the shitty end of the deal. But now she wants to go and I was born in a middle class family. And I can't even hear that again, you guys. If I hear that again, I probably will need medical attention. I, I'm very serious. Like, I'm so sick of this female. I can't even tell you. I, I can't stand the fuck out of sniper fire. I don't know if she's beats. Not, she, she's up there. She's at least up there. She. I, I have to give you my the poll later. I don't know. I, I just cannot stand the fuck out of this bitch right here. That That I'm clear about. Cannot stand her at all. Just cannot stand her. Cannot stand her. And so that was really the tone of the, the, this fiasco. I'm not going to call it an interview because, um, it really wasn't. Like I say, people came in, the few people that had come in, they had a few people that called in, um, Allegedly, they could have been in another room of the damn building for all we know on a cell phone. We don't know. Um, there was a couple of people, I feel like no more than maybe three, I feel like. And then she took a few people like this brother came into the room. Um, you know, they would let them into the room one at a time, the Secret Service, um, which was a little um, like you come there, but you gonna keep your people away from you and shit. I mean... You know, but you've been all up on white people and in their face and the bullshit. So, you know, the whole thing, just the stagecraft of it, all of it is just, this is another shiny object being thrown up in front of black people. Thankfully, she's not going to win for all the reasons I pointed out in my previous video. Um, and um, it's a sad day, but the answer to all of this, everybody, is you don't have unity as a people. That's the one fucking Achilles heel. You wondering why you can't stand up and walk. Because, bitch, you don't got no feet. You see? I don't understand why this concrete is burning me so much. Because you don't got no shoes on, you dumb whore. That's, that's the state of us. We don't understand why we're not getting nowhere. But we won't do the very thing that would cure that. Overnight. Overnight. If we had serious leaders, and just, we don't need a leader, just if we were serious as a people, like-minded people find each other and come together. You don't need a leader. You know, call it an organizer. Somebody be like, okay, we all come together, but you're going to be the one who's going to get the buses together. Some bullshit. You're not really a leader, because that, that cheapens it. But if black people decide as one amoeba, Damn it, we gonna have a party. Don't come asking us for no fucking vote. Don't, in 2025, take your ass. We will find our candidate and we will coalesce around that candidate and we will support them. And that's who we will run. Win or lose, God damn it. It's gonna be our party, but you're not getting our vote no more. That would be revolutionary as fuck. That's the answer. Then you can have a first whatever. You understand? We already know what the agenda would be. But all this guessing game and asking and begging, those days are over, dude. I, like, I'm not doing that shit no more in my life. I'm over it. Plus, I know what America really is. And I already told you, America is not just America. Israel runs this fucking country. They run it. They have infected this country like a virus like they wanted to do in Eastern Europe and Germany. And that's why fucking Hitler kicked their bitch asses out. 
go and watch put in on YouTube type in Hitler freedom or slavery in English enter poof the video will come up you can have it with music playing under it or without music playing under it and you listen to what he's saying so this is why there's no daylight between the US and the Israel because it's the same fucking country the same the same the same they run this bitch they run it it's all a game dude it's all a game it doesn't matter who wins it doesn't and they can make all this horror stories about Trump it don't matter dude at the end of the day black people need to just arm yourself to the teeth the the the, for, the second amendment don't say shit about you got to have a license and you can only have fuck that it don't say that you understand by hook or by goddamn it crook black people need to be armed uh, to the teeth so you can defend your life that's the only thing you should give a fuck about because if you're not alive, you can't do a damn thing. I seen this video that I was going to do a piece on this brother that's walking through his own neighborhood and these fucking white stinking ass devils have to start following him. Again, only white people do shit like that. Nobody else. No Indians, no Arabs, no um, Asians, no uh, uh, Vietnamese, God damn it, no, nobody. Only white people do this shit and keep up all the bullshit that goes on on the earth and in this country and for all of humanity. Only their white ass. Only white people are committing a fucking genocide in Gaza right now. That is only white people. White people are responsible for the slaughter in Yemen and Sudan and Congo. It is white people. You understand? It's white people that have raped and continue to pillage fucking Africa and keep puppets installed so the continent of the people can never rise. It's all their white ass. This is the truth. So you need to be over this fucking country. Over it. The Jedi has spoken.